China's real estate crisis and the global economy. For decades, China's economy has depended on a booming real estate sector fueled by population growth. In 1950, China's population of 500 million was very poor and underdeveloped. A few decades later, around six, it had a population of 1.37 billion and had risen to become the world's second economic power behind the United States. The real estate market created jobs and enabled China's growing middle class to accumulate wealth. Local governments also depend on revenues from land sales. It accounted for almost 30% of the country's economic growth. But the financial situation of the construction industry has become less favorable over the past three or four years. The value of new apartments is falling and sales have dropped by almost 29% in 2022. What could be the causes of this drop in prices that led to the real estate crisis in China? It all goes back to 1949 when China became a communist country. A housing system comparable to that in the USSR, Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, and the People's Democracies was instituted. City residents were housed by their employers for a small fee. Others were hosted in housing managed by municipalities. This was the case until 1998 when the Chinese government decided to authorize the purchase of housing. This new orientation contradicted the traditional Marxist principle of collective ownership, but this was not the concern of China's leaders. Their priority was to get China into the World Trade Organization. To achieve this, it made sense to liberalize part of the Chinese economy, and it was the real estate market that was chosen. China joined the World Trade Organization in 2001 and the member countries thought that liberalization in the economic sector would undoubtedly lead to political liberalization. But this has not been the case. The possibility of becoming a homeowner was quickly understood by many Chinese who, seeing China's growing wealth, rushed to buy homes, which were being built at an accelerated pace. This real estate boom lasted until the mid-2010s. In all Chinese cities, traditional and new, modern buildings and towers have transformed the urban landscape. Today, almost 80% of the Chinese population are homeowners. Construction went ahead without taking into account the government, imposed birth limitation factor. China thus found itself with more housing than population, opening the door to crisis. The one child policy or planned parenthood policy is the public policy of birth control implemented by the People's Republic of China from 1979 to 2015. Intended to prevent the country's overpopulation, it essentially penalizes parents with more than one child, but also carries out abortions and sterilizations by force. Ease for peasant families in the 1980s. In 2013, it introduced a new exception for couples where one of the members is an only child, then replaced from January 1, 2016, by a policy setting the maximum number of children at two per family. In 2021, the relaxation is increased to three children per family. In July 2022, the government announces that penalties beyond three children will be abolished. The Origins of China's Real Estate Crisis The origins of China's current real estate crisis are numerous. One. For civil society players, the crisis is closely linked to measures taken by the Chinese government to curb real estate speculation, which consists of investing in property or real estate assets for subsequent resale at a profit. Restrictions on property purchases and down payment requirements deemed too high are examples. Similarly, the authorities cut off access to easy loans in 2020, putting some developers in deep trouble and buyers with them. Two. China's economic experts add that this situation is also the result of the high level of indebtedness of the country's property developers. 
Having recorded poor sales, they are unable to repay their debts. 3. Others point the finger at the Chinese government's birth control policies. These are at the root of the decline in demand for housing observed on the real estate market. The country's population is no longer growing as it did in the 1990s. 4. As those able to pay for housing have already done so, the company finds itself without customers and therefore without the money to pay off their debts or deliver construction sites that have already been paid for. Panic ensued, leading to protests. 5. To these reasons, we must add overproduction. Real estate developers have launched more construction projects than necessary, without taking demand into account. And now the country is faced with a situation where supply outstrips demand. 6. Not to mention the fact that some cities are not developed enough to live in. They've built buildings in towns where there are no schools, no hospitals, and no jobs. This situation has led to the bankruptcy of several real estate companies. Country Garden, China's largest real estate developer, declared in August 2023 that it expected to record a loss of up to $7.6 billion for the first six months of the year. The company's share price plummeted as investors feared it would be unable to repay billions of dollars in loans. Similarly, another major property developer, China Evergrande, recently filed for bankruptcy in the United States to restructure its debt. The company defaulted on $300 billion of debt in 2021, which was one of the first major signs that China's real estate sector was in trouble. The company lent money to banks to finance construction without taking population trends into account. The sector's difficulties also extend to Chinese financial trust companies, which offer more remunerative investments than conventional bank deposits and often invest in real estate projects. These include Zongrong International Trust, which manages some $85 billion in assets, recently failed to pay its investors. Videos circulating on social networks showed a crowd of investors protesting outside the company's Beijing offices, demanding that it reimburse them. The crisis isn't just affecting developers and banks. It has also hit hundreds of thousands of Chinese who borrowed to buy apartments that were never built. Strikes were organized to protest against the repayment of property loans. Cities that were being built for the rich, made up of politicians, businessmen, ambassadors, and political guests are turning into ghost towns. Verandas are falling into ruin. Mad grass is growing between the concrete slabs, and sites earmarked for the construction of luxury villas are turning into cattle farms. In the northeast of the country, the crisis is real and visible. The State Guest Mansions Project, led by developer Greenland Group, began in 2010 in the hills of the industrial city of Shenyang. Population 9 million, at the height of China's real estate boom. But two years later, the project, comprising 260 European-style villas and luxurious facilities for VIP visitors from the provincial government, was abandoned. Now the countryside has reclaimed its rights. Farmers plow the land where stylized gardens were planned for wealthy, politically well-connected clients. Stray dogs hang around makeshift chicken coops. Ghost towns, like the housing estate under construction near Shenyang, have become part of the Chinese landscape. In the absence of official statistics on the subject, it's hard to say how many there are. A report by a research group affiliated to an official Shanghai association estimated that by June 2022, nearly 4% of the country's housing sites had been abandoned along the way representing a surface area of 231 million square meters. With their unfinished walls and surreal appearance, these ghost towns are attracting a new generation of urban explorers. What is the impact of this real estate crisis on China's economy? Although official figures show that property prices have fallen only slightly in recent years, the realities on the ground suggest otherwise. The financial wealth of Chinese households is concentrated in real estate. The suspension of work in the real estate sector is causing the unemployment rate to rise to 20%. All this has heightened fears of a further slowdown in China's economic growth, which, 
in this interconnected world would have far-reaching effects. Today, China accounts for almost a tenth of global demand for raw materials. Its exports account for more than a tenth of the world's exports of medium and high-tech manufactured goods. China has become a major exporter of electronic and IT-related products and is now the United States' main supplier of consumer electronics, DV players, laptops, cell phones, etc. According to a study carried out by the U.S. Federal Reserve in 2019, economists estimated that an 8.5% drop in Chinese GDP would lead to a 3.25% fall in the world's advanced economies and almost 6% in the world's emerging economies. Analysts recently lowered China's growth forecast for 2023 to 4.5%. One wonders if this is another Lehman Brother moment. The bank that triggered the 2008 subprime mortgage crisis in the United States. In 2008, Lehman Brothers, one of America's largest investment banks, declared bankruptcy due to its exposure to mortgage-related bad debts contributing to a massive global recession. However, China is in a better position to take action than the United States. Given the structure of the Chinese government and the way things are implemented, let's not forget that the government has been planning to downsize the real estate sector for some time. Policymakers realize that some developers are far too aggressive and borrow too much. Since 2019, Chinese President Xi Jinping has been repeating a mantra that housing is for living, not speculation. The Chinese government is encouraging Chinese banks to inject 174 billion euros into the real estate sector to give it some breathing space. In short, to enable developers to complete the construction of projects already sold and thus put an end to the crisis. The question is whether there is a risk of contagion and the possibility of it affecting the rest of the world, as happened in 2008 in the United States of America. According to experts, the crisis itself does not carry any risk of contagion because Western financiers have not invested in the Chinese real estate sector, so they are not exposed. And if the recession persists, the big Chinese banks, mostly public and state-backed, will come to the rescue of the Chinese real estate sector. So there will be no global fallout or collapse as happened in 2008 in the United States. Although the risk of spillover is lower, some sectors such as foreign commodity production are not immune. The large mining groups that supply coal and iron ore are already feeling the impact of the Chinese slowdown. Take the example of the BAP group which in June 2023 posted its lowest profit since the COVID crisis. This is mainly due to the slowdown in activities on the Chinese side. The Chinese real estate crisis is a crisis to follow very closely, as China, as the world's second largest economy, has a considerable impact on the global economy. We believe that this crisis cannot pass without leaving its mark. If you like the video, please subscribe, like and share it, and don't forget to click on the notification bell, so you don't miss our next video. See you soon on Mazel Media, information at the heart of the world.